Father, there's a day that's coming, church. Oh, we thank you, God, that we get to go to that place that's 1,500 miles long and wide. We will rise when he calls our name, church. There's coming, death is coming to everybody in this house. And we just got to be sure that when we lay our head down on our pillow at night, that we're ready to meet him. We don't know when our day is coming. The old, the young, it don't matter anymore. Hallelujah. When your roll is called, you better be ready. There's a peace I've come to know. Though my heart and flesh may fail. There's an anchor for my soul And I can say, Lord, it is well Jesus has overcome And the grave is overwhelmed The victory is won is risen from the dead, and I will rise when He calls my name. No more sorrow, no more pain. I will rise on eagles' wings before my God. Fall on. Oh, I will rise. There's a 
there's a day that's drawing near when this darkness breaks to light and the shadows disappear and my faith shall be my eyes Jesus has overcome and the grave is overwhelmed Oh, we thank you, God. And I will rise. Oh, I will rise. When he calls, when he calls my, my name. name. No, no more sorrow. No more pain. I will rise. On eagles wings before my God. Fall on my knees and rise. Oh, I will rise, and I will rise when He calls my name. No more sorrow, no more pain. I will rise on eagles' wings before my. Fall on my knees and rise. Hallelujah. Oh, can we just praise him in this house? Oh, God, we thank you, Lord. Oh, Jesus, God, we praise you, God, that we don't have to worry. Oh, that we don't have to fear, God, as long as we trust in you, God. Oh, God, that you make the way, Lord, where there seems to be no way. Hallelujah. I'll pray for Jaden this morning. Take a miracle to wash me clean. Then I read the red letters, and the ground began to shake. The prison walls started falling. I became a free man that day.
started falling I am a free man today Oh, we just thank you, God. Oh, God, we thank you, Lord, that you sent your son to that cross. Oh, just for me and for them and all the mankind, Lord. Oh, God, and then we've got this hope. Oh, we've got a hope. We're a prisoner of hope. Hallelujah. A prisoner of hope. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we're going to see him, church. The Bible says that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is alive. Hallelujah, but only the pure in heart is gonna see God. Oh, does that excite anybody? Oh, we're excited this morning, Jesus. No, oh, I'm a traveler far from home. Thank you. 
praise. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah to his name. All right. Turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter uh, 15. I'm going to read one verse, and that's verse 14. Praise God. Matthew chapter 15, uh, verse uh, 14. Uh, real quickly, uh, yesterday was my brother's 75th birthday. He's been in heaven for 12 years. He died uh, on March the 26th, 12 years ago. Amen. If it had not been for Jesus, uh, I wouldn't have no hope of ever seeing him again. But you know what? The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 19 that if in this life only we had hope in Christ Jesus, we'd be of all men most miserable. But I've got a hope of another life. Another life where it's going to be like this song said. Ain't going to be no pain. Ain't going to be no madness. Ain't going to be no sadness. Ain't going to be no sickness. No sorrow. My God, that, that's a place now. That's where I want to go someday. And God's made a way through Jesus. But I want to read this. Uh, actually, I'm going to read verse 13 and verse 14. The Bible says that Jesus answered and said, Ever a plan. And you see, just because the Bible says you're a plant doesn't make you a plant. It really amazes me how that people wants to manipulate the Scripture and make it say, say what it doesn't say. Jesus just, uh, he, he told stories. That's how Jesus preached. You know, he talked talk about uh, how the sower went forth to sow and he sowed seed and some fell by the wayside and some on stony ground and some on thorny ground and some on good ground. Jesus ain't talking about ground. He's talking about the hearts of men and women. And the seed ain't seed like you buy over there at Lowe's, amen, in the garden center. It's the Word of God. The Word of God, uh, you know, some places it goes, it doesn't affect people very much. But I'm glad it can affect you if you'll let it. And then here Jesus is talking about plants. But really it ain't plants. It's talking about people. And He's comparing people to plants. And, uh, and, um, I'll tell this real quick. Uh, when, when my brother did pass away 12 years ago, this past March, some people, instead of buying flowers and stuff, they bought me a, a tree. They bought a redwood. It's about that tall, you know, and I could handle it real well. And, and uh, my wife's got this thing about crooked trees. She wants them to be gun barrel straight, and I say they don't exist. You know, they ain't no perfect trees. But anyway, uh, long story short, she said she first started moving it and then she wanted me to cut it. And that thing's about uh, 40 foot high now. I think I've won the battle. It's that big around and too big to cut. But anyway, uh, that's a plant. That's what a tree is. You're a person. And this is what Jesus is talking about. And the Bible says in verse 13, it says, But Jesus answered and said, Every plant or person which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Amen. Root it up. And then he said, let them alone. Now he's telling you now that he's really talking about people and, and, and not plants. He said, let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Let's all pray. Father, as we humbly come into your presence now, God, uh, we thank you, Lord, for the word of God. And as we've opened this Bible, we pray that you would open every heart that's under the sound of my voice, God, that we and they could receive the engrafted word uh, that we may grow thereby. I pray that you would remove every hindrance out of this place and let the glorious light of the gospel of Jesus Christ go forth in a great and a mighty way. Let hearts be touched and lives changed for the glory of God. And we'll never fail to praise you for we ask it all in Jesus' name. And let the church of the living God shout amen. Hallelujah. While you're being seated all over the building now, for just the next few minutes, I want to talk about what Jesus said there in verse 14. Uh, he said, let them alone. Well, I want to tell you something. Uh, I'm glad that Jesus didn't leave me alone. Uh, I'm glad that the conviction of God that I felt in the house of God uh, as a small boy didn't leave me or leave me alone. Uh, amen. But that's a scary thought to me to think, uh, amen, that there are times that God may 
leave people alone. Uh, amen. That's one of the most scariest uh, scriptures in the Bible to me. Uh, and what makes it even more scary is throughout the Bible, amen, we have confirmation or uh, in the mouth of two or three witnesses saying the same thing uh, about God. Uh, and sadly, many end up in spiritual shipwreck because they build a doctrine uh, on one verse and that can never be in the, ch in the church of God. Uh, in fact, the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians, uh, it says to compare spiritual things uh, with spiritual things. And you say, well, Brother Bellamy, what is spiritual things? Well, the Bible tells us uh, in John chapter 6 and verse 63, uh, red letters like what Jaden sung about. Uh, he, said, he, he said, it is the Spirit that quickeneth. Uh, it's the Spirit of God that makes us alive. Uh, it is the Spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. Uh, and Jesus said, these words uh, that I speak unto you, they're spirit and life. Uh, so after saying that, I want to talk uh, for a few minutes uh, about what the Lord said. Uh, he said, let them alone. Amen. Just let them alone. Uh, if there's any doctrine that's taught throughout the entire Bible from Genesis to Re Revelation, uh, it's that man uh, can absolutely go too far. That's what happened to the Pharisees and the Sadducees here. That's who Jesus was talking about. Uh, he said, they be blind leaders of the blind. If the blind lead the blind, uh, we're going to both end, they're going to both end up in the ditch. So Jesus said, uh, just let them alone. Uh, we can read in the church at Tahatara in Revelation 2 and 21 uh, about a woman that called herself a prophetess. Uh, and Jesus said, I gave her space or a time uh, to repent of her fornication. Uh, and she repented not. Amen. Uh, well, I'm so thankful to God uh, that he didn't leave me alone. Amen. Thank God. Uh, and then we find in the Bible, uh, in Genesis 6 and verse 3, God said, uh, amen, that my spirit will not always uh, strive with man. Uh, all through the Bible we see this happening. Uh, in Genesis chapter 3, uh, we find Adam and Eve, the first family, as they eat the forbidden fruit, fruit uh, they lost paradise. Uh, and then their son Cain murdered their, his brother Abel, uh, praise God, and become a vagabond and a wanderer. In Genesis chapter 7, in the days of Noah and in his generation, men could have filled their hearts uh, and their minds, amen, with the knowledge of God. But rather that generation chose uh, to fill their hearts with evil imaginations, violence, and corruption uh, until they went too far uh, and God destroyed the world with water. Uh, and then in Genesis chapter 11, after the flood, uh, after everybody on the face of the earth knew uh, the judgment of God and what sin would do, uh, we find them trying to build a tower into heaven. Uh, and they wanted to make themselves a name. Uh, and they ended up being scattered to the four corners of the heavens. Uh, amen. They went too far uh, and ended up uh, in rebellion against God. Uh, praise God. From Genesis, uh, in that great book, there's only 50 chapters. Uh, it covers about 3,000 years of man's history. And every sin that we see going on today uh, is recorded in the book of Genesis. Uh, and then Isaiah the great prophet warned uh, in Isaiah 55 and 6. Uh, he said, seek you the Lord while he may be found. Uh, I've made this prediction for many years. Uh, one day after the rapture, amen, this church and every church house uh, in this nation will have a record attendance. Uh, but you know what's happened? Uh, God's going to say, let them alone. Uh, but I'm glad that God is in our midst today uh, and he's not going to leave us alone. Uh, amen. Because Jesus Christ come to seek uh, and to save that which is lost. Uh, and then we have a shocking verse uh, in Jeremiah, amen, this weeping prophet of Judah said in the seventh chapter in the 16th verse, uh, he said, therefore, pray not thou for this people, amen. Uh, ain't that amazing? I thought we were supposed to pray for everybody. Uh, and then here God speaks through the Holy Ghost uh, on this great, to this great prophet uh, that was ordained and called by God uh, before he was ever formed in his mother's womb. Uh, and he said, therefore, uh, amen, pray not thou for this people, neither lift up a cry nor a prayer for them, uh, neither make intercessions to me, uh, for I will not hear thee. Uh, my God, that scares me uh, to think that there's going to be a time uh, that people will seek God early and can't find him. Uh, amen. They're going to call upon him, uh, but he will not answer. And then we have the great prophet Hosea, the one that God told to marry Gomer a harlot and said she's going to leave you. And God was telling this prophet, this is the same way that Israel has done 
from me. And then God says to Hosea, the great prophet, Ephraim, that's one of the 12 tribes of Israel. He said, Ephraim has joined to idols. Let him alone. Amen. That is scary to say the least. The Bible teaches that there's going to be entire cities that was destroyed because they rejected the Son of God. Jesus Christ himself said this in Matthew 11, verses 20 through 24. Then began he to upbraid the cities wherein most of his mighty works were done because they repented not. And that word upbraided actually means to judge and to explain what's going on and why it happened and what come to pass and what the reason it did. He said, woe unto thee, Chorazin, which, amen, where, woe unto thee, Bethsaida, for if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Zidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable, the master said, for Tyre and Zidon at the day of judgment than for you. Amen. And then it says, And thou, Capernaum, which art exalted unto heaven, shall be brought down to hell. For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Sodom, it would have remained unto this day. God's son who cannot lie said to Chorazin, he said, he said, if Sodom had had the opportunity that you had, it would allow to this day so that lets me know that there are cities and civilizations and nations amen that could have lasted but they didn't last amen because they rebelled against a holy God that is almighty and all powerful and all knowing thank God and the Bible says but I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable for Sodom for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for thee and all the above that I just spoke about Amen. Uh, is of uh, peoples and cities and nations uh, and even the entire world that went too far and they waited too long and they was too late for the message of God. Amen. My God of heaven. Amen. I pray, I pray earnestly that God would send us a Holy Ghost, God ordained, Jesus exalting, word preaching revival that would turn the hearts of the sons and daughters back to God. Because I want to tell you something this morning, church. Amen. Your hope better not be in the Democrats or the Republicans. Your hope needs to be in Jesus Christ because he's the answer he's what this world needs he's the savior amen thank God forever amen but let's go on we're going to self destruct if we don't turn to Jesus that's what all these verses is saying and Lord help us not to do that praise God but in Luke chapter 13 listen to what Jesus says in Luke chapter 13 verses 22 through 24 it says, and he went through the cities and villages and teaching and journeying towards Jerusalem. And then said he, and then said one unto him, and you know these people, this apostolic band and the masses and the multitudes that was following the Christ, uh, they said unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? I mean, that's the question, but the truth of the matter is, the Bible tells you, Jesus said in Luke's gospel, chapter six, he said, fear not little flock. Amen. For it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. He just said it's going to be a little flock. It doesn't have to be a little flock, but it's going to be because people rather live in rebellion. They rather live in rebellion than to serve God. And this individual, this unknown person, as they walk and they're journeying from city to city and community to community, heading to Jerusalem, they say, Lord, are there few that be saved? And he said unto them, strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, th this is amazing to me. He said, listen, everybody goes to church ain't going to heaven, church. I wish they was, but they ain't. It's just every word, the truth. It's saved people. It's born again people. Amen. It's people that's got their sins under the blood of the Lamb that's going to heaven. And Jesus said, strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will, he's answering their question, uh, Lord, are there few that be saved? He said, many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. And, and if I'd been there on that fateful day when Jesus made such an astounding statement, I'd have had to ask the master, why won't they make it? Because if there's going to be many that's trying to make it and don't make it, I don't want to be in that group. I want to be in the group 
that makes it. I want to be in the group that makes it. So, amen. And uh, you, you said, Jesus, uh, amen, that there's going to be many that are going to try to make it. But for some reason, Jesus, you're telling us that they ain't going to make it. Something is going to get in the way of them making it and they're going to fail. Amen. But we find the answer to this question that I would have had on that fateful day from the Scripture. Amen. And, 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 and the Bible says, now listen to this church, uh, how many knows the Bible's right? Brother Bellamy be wrong, but that Bible is never wrong. I was listening to a preacher yesterday and, uh, and, and he was actually talking about another preacher that uh, was uh, interviewed by Pierce Morgan. And Pierce Morgan asked him some questions and you know, some preachers is like politicians. They dance around the truth. They, they got a, two pounds of words with a spoonful of truth in it because they don't want to really tell you, hey man, what you don't want to hear. And anyway, I ain't going to get into what they're saying, but the, the truth of the matter is uh, what, I, what I'm trying to tell you this is uh, Buddy Jesus said in Matthew 7, verse 21, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. He said it's going to talk more than saying, Lord, Lord, amen, ha hallelujah. He said, here's who's going to heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Jesus said, many will say to me in that day, hey, amen, uh, 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 Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Have we not hurled the eternal message of God in your name? Uh, amen, and we've cast out devils in thy name, and we've done many wonderful works in thy name. And then Jesus said, will I profess unto them, I never knew you, but I preached Jesus. Uh, I never knew you, but I cast out devils. I never knew thee, but I've done good works. I fed the hungry. I visited the sick. Amen. I help the flood victims. Uh, praise God. He said, I'm going to tell them, depart from me, uh, ye that work iniquity for I know you not. And that's scary. Praise God forever. And, and these people, evidently that Jesus was talking about, they made up their own way to get to heaven. Like the people that build the tower in Genesis chapter 11. I'm going to tell you something, church. You can't get to heaven. You ain't good enough, you ain't pretty enough, you ain't rich enough. Uh, hey, none of us can get to heaven on our own. I'm gonna, you can't even work your way into heaven. Amen. Praise God. The Bible says in Ephesians 2 that we're saved by grace. That means you don't deserve it, but you get it. Now, every one of us knows that what that is. Everybody in this building that's got any age on you, you've got stuff before that you didn't deserve, right? I'd say if you work for a company, I know I have. I've got paid for stuff that really I didn't do. Amen. I'd be sitting in the shade somewhere, watching the trains go by and getting paid for it. Amen. Living the dream. Praise God forever. And then you get a phone call and it's a nightmare. But anyway, we'll get off of that. I'm just telling you, all of us understands that. You, you, you get stuff you don't deserve. Amen. Thank God forever. I think it was Father's Day. Man, I'm telling you something. My... my children and uh, daughter-in-laws and I don't know if it's all I know is they bought me a pair of walking shoes. Amen. And I, I forgot about having them. Ain't that appeal? I forgot about having a brand new pair of, uh, of walking shoes. And I asked my wife, I just remembered them this weekend. I said, where's them shoes at? And she told me. And I went and got them and wore them over at the honey festival. Man, I was like I was walking on springs. I almost wore them to church this morning. That's a God's truth. Amen. Best feeling shoes I ever got in my life. I didn't deserve those shoes. Amen. I got them because somebody loved me. I'm going to tell you something. You don't deserve heaven, but if you accept God's gift in the person of Jesus Christ, you can go. Amen. Because He loves you. And the Bible says, for we're saved by grace through faith, not of works. Everybody shout that with me, not of works. So you can't work your way in there. It ain't the way you cut your hair or the clothes you wear or whether or not you shave your face. I was listening to another preacher. He said it was a rip-roaring sin for a man to have facial hair. Amen. So he's got me in hell three days before I die because I've got a mustache. And you ain't got a chance because you've got a full beard. But I'm going to tell you, God ain't looking at the hair on your face. Uh, he's looking at your heart. God seeth a man not as man seeth. Man looks on the outward appearance, but God sees the heart. 
I'm going to tell you, you can be slick shaved, amen. Your face can be as slick as my bald head. And if your heart's bad, you ain't going to heaven. Not of works. You cannot work your way in heaven. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Amen. Thank God forever. But listen, these people evidently made up their own way to get to heaven. And they was totally disregarding what the wise man Solomon said. In Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 12, Solomon said, There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Second Peter 1 and verse 10, the Bible says, Wherefore the rather and brethren give all diligence to make your calling and election sure. If there's anything I want to be sure about, is I'm going to make it to heaven. I'm going to make it to heaven. That's what I want to be sure about. Now back to Luke chapter 13 and verse 25. The Bible says, When once the master of the house has risen up and shut to the door, the door will close someday. And you begin to stand without and to knock at the door saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us. See, they know where to go, but they didn't go when they had the opportunity to go. And now it's too late to get in and they're knocking, wanting in. And here's what happens. They're going to knock at the door saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us. And he shall answer and say unto you, I know you not from which you are. Then shall you begin to say, Lord, we've eaten and drunk in thy presence and thou hast taught in our streets. And they're saying, God, I went to the church dinners. Amen. I've heard you preach. I've been in the audience. I've heard you speak in such a manner that kept our hearts spellbound. Amen. We've eat at church. We've listened to the message. Amen. But Jesus, the Bible says in verse 27, shall say, I tell you, I know you not whence you are. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. What a sad, sad day that's going to be for somebody. Amen. Be so close. Amen. I've eaten with you. I've sat at the table where you was. I've heard what you said, the gracious words, and now I've got to leave. My God of heaven, do you know what has happened here in this story? What has happened in this story, they went too far. Therefore, God said, let them alone. Let them, you can't get in here now. And we see this not just in the Old Testament, but throughout the New Testament as well. And I say, God, have mercy on all of us. In Luke 13, verse 28 and 29, the master said, There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. What a day that's going to be when you shall see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God and yourself thrust out. You say, I'll never see that. Well, the rich man looked out of hell and seen Lazarus in Abraham's bosom, which is paradise. Amen. You're going to see more than you think. And he said, you're going to live to the time because you've rejected me, amen. And you're going to see Abraham. And you're going to see Isaac. And you're going to see Jacob. And you're going to see all the prophets. And they're going to be in the kingdom of God, but you're not. You're not going to be in the kingdom of God. You're going to be thrust or thrown out. And they shall come from the east and from the west. We're in the west from Jerusalem. Amen. We're going to come, he says. We're going to come from the east and the west and from the north and from the south and sit down in the kingdom of God. And then we have Paul warning of the last days. And I know a lot of people, they don't believe it's the last days. But buddy, I'm going to tell you something. If you can't see the handwriting on the wall, I don't know what it's going to take. I mean, whoever here to blood moons outside of the Bible to just the past few years? Who's ever seen so much of the uh, 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 things that's going on in the heavenly bodies? Jesus said in Luke 21, there'll be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, the stress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear, for looking after the things that are coming upon the world. And the powers of heaven shall be shaken and then shall they see the Son of Man coming with power and great glory. Hallelujah, I wanna tell you, the Lord is coming and you better believe it. And if He don't come in our lifetime, we're leaving anyhow. Hallelujah. In the past three weeks, there's been two guys that I graduated with, fell into the hands of the living God, died, dead, gone, expired. Amen. Gone. Thank God forever. You say, does that bother you? Why, well, sure it does. I want to live. Amen. And all your buddies dying, that makes you wonder, am I next? Thank God forever. You say, I don't think thoughts like that. Well, I do. Amen. And I know when I think thoughts like that, that makes me want to do better. Amen. 
But Paul said this 2,000 years ago in 2 Timothy 3 and verse 1. He said, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. That word perilous means fierce, ferocious, difficult, scary. Man, I, we're living in scary times. I'm telling you, we are. You don't, half of us don't know what our children's been taught in school. You don't know what doctor to go to. Hey Amen. You don't know what medicine to take. You don't know what news agency to believe. I'll tell you, believe none of them. Trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. Lean not into your own understanding. And he'll direct your paths. He'll show you the way. Amen. His word will be a lamp under our feet and a light under our path. Amen. Praise God forever. The Bible will. This know also that in the last days, perilous, dangerous, scary times shall come. Thank God forever. Verse 5, it gives you a lot of other things that's going to happen, but I want to skip through this for the, uh, uh, for the sake of time. In verse 5 of 2 Timothy 3, he says, having a form of godliness. Listen, but before I ever got saved, I still believed in Jesus. I still prayed. Hey Amen. I know people know me then, didn't think I, I prayed every day, every night. I prayed, God, don't let me die like this. I was wanting to use God as a spare tar. I wanted to live like hell and still go make sure I made it to heaven. But that ain't the way it works, church. No man can serve two masters. You're going to love the one, despise the other, or you're going to cling to the one. Uh, amen. And ain't going to hang on to the, I'm glad that I'm hanging on uh, to Jesus. Thank God forever. Amen. Hallelujah. But he said in the last days, they're going to have a form of godliness, an outline. But they're going to deny the power thereof from such turn away. Amen. The message Bible says in 2 Timothy 3 and 5, they'll make a show of religion. But, but behind the scenes, they're pure animals. Stay clear of these people. Verse 6 says, For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women, laden with sins and led away with diverse or many lusts, ever learning, verse 7, and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now it's Janese and Jambres, that was magicians that they, 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 listen, I'm going to tell you, all miracles ain't of God. Amen. I mean, when Moses stole down that rod and it turned into a serpent, you know Janese and Jambres done the same thing. They throwed down a stick and it turned into a snake. Hey Amen. But you know the good news is, Moses snake eat their snake. Amen. And I'm telling you, no matter what the devil throws at you, God's greater. The greater one is in you. Amen. God is all powerful. Amen. The Bible says if you believe there's one God, thou doest well. The devils believe and tremble. They tremble at God. Jesus will walk in synagogues and demon-possessed people will start crying out. That devil is speaking through them saying, Thou son of David, if you come to torment us before our time. They knew who he was. It's amazing to me that the demoniacs knew who Jesus was and the religious people didn't. That's just the truth right in your Bible. And the Bible says, ever learning, never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now is Janice and Jambres withstood Moses. Amen. So do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds, reprobate or callous concerning the faith. But here's why I said all of that is to share with you verse 9. Verse 9 says, but they shall proceed no further. God's got a line out there. Amen. Amen. Remember when, when Barack Obama was president and he said, I'm going to draw a line over there, a red line, and he drawed it. Amen. And... Uh, and they crossed the line and America didn't do nothing. I'm going to tell you something. When God says, I've got a red line right there, we cross it, He's going to do something. Because God is not a man that He should lie. Neither the Son of Man that He shall, shall repent. Hath He said and shall He not do it? Brother, when God says it, He's going to do it. And, and He said, they shall. These people that Paul was just talking, they shall proceed no further. Jesus warned in Luke 13, verses 34 and 35, as he looked at Jerusalem, he's standing there and he's weeping over the city that bears the name of God. And he said, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, which killeth the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how oft would I have gathered thy children together as a hen doth gather her brood under her wings, and you would not. And look what he says, because they rejected God's invitation. Behold your house. In the beginning of Jesus' ministry, he called the temple God's house. My house shall be called the house of prayer of, by all nations. But now at the end of his ministry, as he weeps over the city of God, he says, your house. 
He's saying, you all have rejected me and you're on your own. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate and barely or truly. I say unto you, you shall not see me until the time come when you shall say, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Paul said to the church at Rome, in Romans chapter 1, verse 24, verse 26, and verse 28, three times God warned that God, Paul warned the church at Rome that we can do enough to be abandoned by God. I think it's heart-wrenching and heartbroken when children are abandoned by parents. I think it's heart-wrenching and heartbroken when children abandon their parents. Amen. That, that, that's not natural, church, to do such hideous things of that. But what about God? And God said in Romans 1 and 24, wherefore, that means because of this. You want to know what it's about? It says because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations. Their foolish hearts were darkened, professing themselves to be wise. They become fools. And it says wherefore, or because of this, God also gave them up. That's a sad epitaph for to be said by the lips of an all-knowing God. I've give up on you. That's what he said there at the beginning of our message when it said, let them alone. You know why God said let them alone? He'd give up on them. You say, ain't never heard nothing like that in my life. It's all through the Bible. It ought to scare every one of us. And he said, he said God also gave them up. What did he give them, up, give them up to? To uncleanliness, through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Verse 26, for this cause God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Verse 28, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate or callous mind to do those things which are not convenient. Praise God. But the good news, out of all of this negative and bad stuff I've talked about, God hasn't given up on you. He hasn't given up on me. That's why we're in church today. Thank God forever because we know full well in our heart, amen, that God hasn't given up on us, amen. There's parents that's given up on children, but God doesn't, amen. God hasn't. Thank God forever. And I'm glad of that. Now I'm closing, believe it or not. The good news is, I don't think that God, amen, has said that to you or me. Man, let them alone. I've given up on them. If He had, we probably wouldn't be here today. Amen. However, for your sake, praise God, please hear God's voice. And you know, a lot of people is waiting for this lightning bolt experience from God and He's going to grab you by the shirt sleeve or the nap of your collar and drag you to the altar and you're going to miss Him, amen, because I'm going to tell you, amen, Elijah stood at the mouth of the cave, uh, amen, and there was a, a, a great earthquake and uh, it broke the rocks, but God wasn't in the earthquake and there was a great fire, but God wasn't in the fire and there was a great wind, but God wasn't in the wind. And then it said there was a still, small voice. And I venture to say there's not a soul in this building today that hasn't heard that. Amen. Man, I heard that voice as a little boy up there at Lick Ranch sitting on a homemade wooden pew with people's initials carved in it. Just a little boy. Man, they'd get to preaching and shouting and singing them songs. I'm going to tell you, church, I felt God a long time before I ever served God. My daddy at Memorial Weekend would take me over there where my papa was buried on Fort Noble's farm and they'd have them old pine logs split and them old preachers would get to singing and a shouting, amen, and buddy, the hair would raise on my head. I know God's real, amen. I know what that voice is, amen. And Elijah said, and then there was a still, small voice. And you know what Elijah done? He got out of that cave, he wrapped his head up in his mantle. Amen. And the vo what did that voice say? He said, what doest thou here, Elijah? I'm going to tell you what we're doing here. We know they're more to live in than what we've experienced. But there's God. And the Bible, I, I just pray that you'll hear that still small voice that will speak to you today. I pray that you'll heed the Spirit's nudge and answer, praise God, the knock from the nail-scarred hand of Jesus, praise God. And here's why it's so important to do that. It's because the Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 8 and verse 20, 
The Bible says that the harvest is past and the summer is ended. And you see, I can tell that fall is here. The texture of the grass on my lawn is different. The leaves, the sycamores, and other trees, they're beginning to turn a little bit. The, 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 the tilting of the earth is a little bit different now in the sunlight. It, it, it doesn't shine like it did in the spring and summer and the days are getting shorter. Amen. The harvest is past. And it says the summer's ended and summer is going to end. The last day of summer, the first day of fall is September the 23rd, 2023. Amen. So it means in 20 days, we're going to go out of summer into fall. And, and, and the Bible says, and here's what I'm going to share with you. The Bible says that the harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we're not saved. We're not saved. Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 19 says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I've set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life. It's up to you Amen. that both thou and thy seed may live. And what that is saying, that if we serve God, it can affect our children. Yes. They can be blessed because of our faithfulness to God. Amen. Jesus said in John chapter 6 and verse 44, as they come and get us a song, Jesus said, no man can come unto me except the Father which has sent me draw him. Well, how does God draw people? He draws people by that still small voice that I spake about and the nudging and the wooing of the Spirit of the living Lord, amen, and the knock at every heart. And I want to ask you a question without you answering it to me because I don't matter. Answer it to yourself. Is God drawing you today? Have you sensed the nudge of God's Spirit, the conviction that only He can give? Well, that's an awesome thing that it be has because that's the way you get to God. No man can come unto me except the Father which has sent me draw him. And he said, if he'll come, I will raise him up at the last day. In Acts chapter 3 and verse 19, Peter preaching that great Pentecostal message, amen, to the multitudes after the man got healed at the lame gate. He said, repent you therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. That means race the way. Ain't that amazing? A new start, a fresh beginning, a new life. That your sins may be blotted out. And it says this will happen when the times of refreshings shall come from the presence of the Lord. If God's dealing with you, He wants to refresh you. Thank God. I don't know how many in here deals with computers, but sometimes you've got to refresh them. If you, I'll, let's do it like this. Most everybody's got one of these doodads. Hey man, I'll tell you what, if you don't keep them updated, they'll get so slow you can't use them. You know what you're doing when you update them? You're refreshing them. Somebody walked in this church this morning, you need updated. Hey man, what you're doing ain't working and you know it. But God works. And the Bible says, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. 1 Timothy 2 and verse 5, the word of the Lord says, for there's one God and one mediator between God and men. The man Christ Jesus. A mediator is someone that goes to somebody else on your behalf. They're talking for you. We all remember what mediation is. When we was teenagers and we got our eyes on a girl, we'd get her buddy to go talk to them for us. They mediate him. Well, I'm going to tell you, you've got a buddy in heaven that's sitting on the right hand of the Father and he's talking to God about you. He's doing that because he loves you. And because you can't do it yourself, it's going to take a little, bit, little help. The Bible says that He ever liveth to make intercessions, going to somebody else on your behalf for you. And I've got one last verse, and then we're going to pray. The Bible says in Romans chapter 5 and verse 2, By Him, Jesus, we have access by faith into this grace. I'm glad that we got a way to get to God. I'm glad that we got a way to get to God. And we all need God. Listen, God's God without us, but us without God, we're in trouble. Amen. But I've learned something about God. You know, most people don't want much to do with you when you're in trouble, but God does. Yes. Psalms 46 and 1 says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in the time of trouble. 
If you walked in this church this day in trouble, amen, I'm telling you, God's right here to help you. And you know it full well. And the reason I know that you know it is because you hear that still small voice. And so that devil's sitting on your shoulder and that devil's saying, yeah, it's old Gary. He just knows what the right words. Listen, I don't know. I, I couldn't convict a fly, let alone you. Amen. Amen. I couldn't save one, let alone you. But God, salvation is of God. And then you've sensed that nudge of that spirit. The spirit of God that makes a lump get in your throat and a tear in your eye and a heaviness in your heart knowing full well that you ain't living as well as you ought to. And then that knock of Jesus. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. See, he don't just knock. He loves you so much that he, I'm standing at the door and knocking. And then he says, if any man will hear my voice. So that makes me know that he don't just knock at our hearts, but he calls out to us like he did Elijah. I stand at the door and knock. If any man or woman will hear my voice and open the door, you've got to let him in. Open the door. He said, I'll come in and sup with him. And he with me. When we was getting ready for church this morning, my wife said, where are we going to eat at? I said, I don't know, but I ain't going to Wolf County today. I can tell you that. I may get shot down. They override me sometimes, church. But what I'm trying to tell you, wherever I go to eat, I'm going to have some of my family with me. They're going to go eat with me wherever it's at. And that's good. And I love my family just like you love yours. But I want to tell you something. This is awesome. You could go dine with Jesus right here in this church service today if you'll listen to him. And I'm going to tell you something else. He ain't going to leave you alone. Because the Bible says that the whole mission of Christ was to seek and to save that which is lost. If you're lost today, the good news is Jesus is after you. And the bad news is if you ain't careful, you're going to run from him. And what you need to do is repent and turn around and run toward him. Because... That's the best life. Father God and Master of Heaven, as we humbly come into Your presence today, Lord, God, I pray for each and every individual that's in this building today that You would have mercy and not sacrifice. God, that You would use this message and these songs and, and, and ordain this altar call, God, and speak to people's hearts and lives and pull them out of the clutches of hell and of death and translate them into the kingdom of your dear Son. And we'll never fail to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory, for we ask it all in Jesus' name. And let the church of the living God shout, Amen. Amen. Say, sing, while your head is bowed.